that you and I also do? Am I on the downbeat? Are you on the up? I'm trying to be on the upbeat. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. We'll just take it from I've always felt that the voice itself is a very eloquent language. In some ways, I think the voice is a more eloquent language than one language. And what I mean by that is that I think that it it speaks to the universal soul um, and that it goes directly to the heart. Whereas if I'm singing in English or in Norwegian or French, basically there's a kind of a filter system that has to be used for the listener to understand what what the music means and i think that what i've always loved about music is that it's a more abstract kind of medium and in that way it can speak to anyone in a very direct way and i think that with vocal music usually is set to text and so you have to in a certain way go through the language to get the emotions and i what i'm trying for is a more direct kind of communication I feel very fortunate to just that I, that we're still going. I mean, that's something that a lot of people have not had that privilege to keep on going. I mean, a lot of people have closed. At this point in America, it's very, very difficult. Um, I think that one of the things that has been something that's good about, about the way that I work is that I'm extremely flexible, that I can work on something like an opera piece, but I also can do a solo very happily do a solo right here in my loft with five light bulbs and not like, you know, a hundred very fancy lighting instruments. has six women characters as the main characters um, where usually you'll see for example men bonded groups like uh, the seven samurai or um, King Arthur and the, and the Knights of the Round Table those are male groups of heroes and that's something that we take for granted in our society but you don't literally see six strong women who are not angry women but are just fulfilled women um, as the main heroes of, of um, of an artwork, you'll usually see them e- either as I don't know, coffee clutches or housewives or something like that. I mean, it's it's you don't see that kind of independence of nature and yet just them being who they are. I still have my telephone. <laughs> Hello. 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 Oh, 
I don't really feel that uh, by nature I'm a political artist, although I do think that just carrying on, and in a sense you could say being stubborn about the fact that art is a spiritual practice is a political act. I mean, nowadays I'm feeling that that is a political act. But in terms of content, I don't really feel that I work politically uh, specifically because, first of all, my forms are not verbal forms. And I think that in a certain way, if I'm thinking about someone like Brecht, who was really working with the most delicate and refined sense of, of what words can do, um, and, it, and it demanded a certain kind of analytical thinking to experience his work, that's a person that could really work in a, in a very refined way with politics, with the principles of, of, of politics or political life. Um, I think with me, I'm, I'm much more, in a certain way, I'm more a po poetic kind of artist. And um, I think that that level will always be in my work as, as one layer, but I work more obliquely in that way. But, you know, I mean, people have asked, for example, like with Education of the Girl Child, is this, is this a feminist piece? And, um, of course, it is on a certain level because I'm a woman and I believe in, in um, both men and women being able to fulfill themselves as whole human beings. Vessel I called an opera epic, and it was an opera epic in... in uh, in a metaphorical sense, but also was an opera epic in a very literal sense, in that it took place in three different spaces in New York, and the audience moved from one, from one space to another. So it was a, a literal epic that they had to travel from one place to another. Um, the first part was done in my, in my loft, not this particular loft, but where I was living at that time. And then I rented a little bus, and then the audience got on the bus, and they were driven to the other space, the second space, and then they walked about two blocks to a, p a big parking lot where the third part was done. Um, and basically, I thought of Vessel as a kind of medieval tapestry piece loosely based on the life of Joan of Arc. And I was thinking of Joan of Arc as a kind of visionary, archetypal female character of a woman who had vision and, in a sense, had to trust the inner vision enough to act on it, which I, I think is something we all have those voices inside, but it's whether we have the courage to literally act on that, that voice without really knowing uh, anything definite. I mean, it's really like, in a sense, it's also um, what an artist does, that you have to trust your intuition and trust your inspiration and trust your instinct. And you might not know exactly what the, the result is going to be, but you have to follow that. In a sense, you have to follow it blindly.
Do You Be is, is one of those songs that happens or one of those inspirations that happens rarely in a lifetime. You hope that that will happen, but it doesn't always happen. You usually have to work very hard for every little inch or every little moment that you have. But Do You Be was one of those pieces that came in one sitting. It was as if a spirit just entered my body and, um, and that was the piece and pretty much the whole form um, in, in one afternoon. So I always feel when I sing Do You Be that, that, I'm, that I try to let something go through me. I mean, that that's really what the piece is about, and that's the way I try to perform it. Three Heavens and Hells um, came from my friend Carla Blank, who I went to school with, asking me if I would set to music some words of poetry that her child, Tennessee Reed, had written. There are three heavens and hells, people heaven and hell, animal heaven and hell, things heaven and hell. What do the three heavens and hells look like? They are all the same. So I thought, wow, this is like Buddhism. I mean, this is complete philosophical. If you actually really think about it, I thought, what would animal heaven and hell be? You know, what, what exactly is, well, we, we know more what people heaven and hell is. But what would things heaven and hell be? I mean, it seemed like such a wonderful, the images seemed so wonderful to work with. And so I got completely inspired. And from that little poem, I got about a 23 minute piece. <laughs> the first time that I ever used words in, in a piece. And I liked the idea of doing it to children's poetry because I felt that it would be much freer. The poems were wonderful, but poetry sets up a certain metrical, metric relationship and, and a very, um, I don't know, for me it's a little confining like to, to necessarily do, do the poetry justice. voice can be anything. Working with my own voice and working with my own body and then something happens and then uh, as I work on it and sometimes I'll even start in a very technical kind of way of working on technical thing vocally and then as it happens I start to actually understand more and more what it is and sometimes what it is is a spirit that comes more from an animal kind of inspiration but it's not trying to imitate an animal. Manfred Eicher would say, I'm, I'm definitely a studio-shy musician. I'm very, very nervous as in the studio. It's not my happiest time of life. I feel like I'm, I'm more comfortable with an audience. And over the years with him, with ECM, I mean, I feel like we've gotten some really, really good recordings. I mean, I think Do You Be was a really inspired performance. And Dolman music, some of the things from that are really inspired. I think something that he does that is very interesting and very unusual in our time and, and the time that we live in is that he allows for mistakes in a take, for example. He is not a person that edits every bar the way that they do now. He believes that, 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 that records are a lot, in a sense, have the quality of life, you know, that they are a live medium and that the little mistakes or idiosyncrasies or things that I would think are technically 
not so great. I mean, vocally, you know, um, there are times where I listen to my records that I'm just cringing, you know, with the cracks, the, the intonation, the this, the that. But in, on a certain level with records, I mean, I hardly ever listen to a record of mine. Once it's finished, I never listen to it again. Um, and I feel that it really has its own life. And at a certain time, you have to let go and say, OK, this is, this is where I was at that moment. The first film that I did was for a piece called 16 Millimeter Earrings, which was a piece that I did in 1966. That was a very, very, very important piece for me because it was a solo piece, but I, it was the first time that I wrote my own vocal score for it. Um, it was the first time that I used film, and it was when I really, really started to be able to sense what it was to weave the elements of voice, movement, visual image, uh, film, costume, um, setting into one form. I mean, I had had glimpses that this was the form that I wanted to work with, but I had never done such a, a piece that had such a large scope. It was a half an hour solo, and it was very, very complex. It had four movie projectors. Um, it had like four tape recorders that fed in. At that time, we didn't have multi-track tape recorders. So I mean, it really was something that was very, very important for me. And then the sense that you could take all these different elements and that by weaving them together in a certain way, that would make a, a very poetic and, and um, multi-dimensional statement, but that had a, a real line through it and a kind of clarity to it. Film is, is a medium that I love because it does include all the different elements that I usually work with it within one form, and that's very nice. Um, that's what I try to do in the live performances, too. But the nice thing about film is that film I can look at it after I finish it. <laughs>
I was kind of interested in the Middle Ages as seen through the Jewish community, which no one knows very much about what that was in Europe. Um, and that, in the music for that, I studied, uh, there was a book uh, uh, that's called, um, that's by a man named Edelson, and it's, a, it's Jewish music in the Middle Ages. Nurit Tillis gave that to me as inspiration, and it's a wonderful book that shows the modes, the Jewish modes of the Middle Ages and the Christian modes of the Middle Ages and how those two influenced each other a lot. I took some of those modes and then I wrote my own melodies. I was just kind of curious to see if I could write melodies based on the medieval, on those particular Jewish medieval modes. Another thing that I've always loved about film is the magic of it, the way that you can change space and time, that, that you, time becomes a very elastic kind of medium and so does space. So that's something that I always try to do in my live performances and in my music as well. I think of it time as a, as a plastic or sculptural kind of medium. So film you can really do that well with. Um, and I wanted it to, in a sense I wanted it to continue the uh, tradition that John Cocteau started. Um, I've always loved Cocteau. Cocteau was always somebody who gave me courage as a young artist because I felt that here was another person that was working in a lot of different mediums, but actually working with what is the appropriate way to say something. In other words, that's something that I ask myself a lot too. If I have something that I want to say, what is the proper medium to say it in? When words came into film, something got lost in my opinion. I mean, I feel like Murnau and those last silent filmmakers knew what the, the language of images was. Um, and, and I think that I'm very interested in the musicality of, Im of images themselves. Everybody, go home, return to your homes, go back home. Brother, brother, what? what's going on here? Well, they don't know what they're doing. They want to go to the Jewish quarter, but they don't know what they want. They just follow the hatred. They're completely mad. They say the Jews are guilty for all this. But everybody's dying, Jews, Christian, man, woman. I'm sorry, I can talk to you anymore. Go home now. Go, 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 go home. that same theme uh, of, of what it is to be true to your inner nature and your spiritual nature, even in the face of perhaps the society not 
going along with it or a lot of resistance. So I think that's also a theme that I work with a lot, you know, that thing of the inner voices and, and trusting those inner voices. So, um, and, and I guess that in Atlas, I thought of an explorer as a person that, um, you know, had to have a certain courage to risk dying, for example, you know, like in the mountains of Tibet. Um, it's a very literal kind of danger, but uh, is willing to f undergo a lot of danger to, to find what they're looking for. And then there's an irony to that, uh, that that I work with in Atlas, which is that you can spend your whole life thinking that you're going to find something on the outside, find what you're looking for, as, as I said before. And actually, in fact, what happens with the character of Alexandra in Atlas is she realizes at the end of her life that what she was looking for is just having a good cup of coffee and literally being able to appreciate the moment and the tendernesses of very simple and, and daily kinds of life things. work in my own room, so to speak, with a lot of the materials. Um, and I like to, sometimes I've come in also with the whole structure finished, but it's rare that I do that because I, I like to feel that it's a, a sculptural medium, as we've said before, where I'm actually weaving these elements together and that I can't really get the sense of what the whole will be until I hear it, until I feel it, until I get the sense of what this song is about, what, this, what, the, what it's trying to say. Uh, I can do that, of course, myself, if I'm doing a solo for myself. But when I'm working with other people, I like to have the fact of their presences have some kind of, um, you could have, say that that, that that also has space in the creation of the work. So that it's not, I'm not just dealing with, uh, you know, objects, I'm dealing with human beings. And in a sense, they are, will have some kind of influence into what I choose that the form is going to be. I had an ensemble for a number of years that was very steady, like um, people that I was, I was singing with for from 10 to 15 years. And at a certain time in their lives, um, I think that they had to find other things about their own lives, like, for example, get married, leave New York, or do their own work. I mean, there's a lot of people um, that have come through my life um, and that, in a sense, all of us need to find our own ways of fulfilling ourselves. I've been very lucky that I've never had anybody leave in, you know, some kind of anger or something like that. It's really more uh, a kind of uh, give and take situation. So I've had the privilege of working with people that I worked with long ago, again, at different in different projects. I think he's saying, you're mine, you're mine. Come to me, come to me. You can't escape. I'm here underneath everything else that exists. Come to me, my dear, come to me. You know, it's got that, it sort of has a little of that quality. Maybe. No, I like it. You know, and then it also has the 
African man that we were talking about. I mean, it's got, it's a ghost guy. That's a ghost guy, isn't it? So that what I mean is that every once in a while you might want to go, I mean, Make you more seductive at times. Sometimes more seductive and sometimes crazier. I mean, okay. you know, that I feel like he can, he doesn't he can have do to always be the same. Right, he can change his. Yeah. Okay. Scary or something. Tom is a very thing. active in the gay community in New York, and um, a lot of his community is dying now. Um, so a lot of times I'll see Tom and he will have just gone to a funeral, or he'll sing at a funeral, or He's taking somebody to the hospital who's dying, or he's taking someone home from the hospital who's gotten a little bit better, but who will die. So when I was working on the piece, I wasn't really thinking about it from the beginning, but I had, I had worked on some of the material for the piece a number of years ago when I was up in, in Banff, Canada, when I was in an artist colony. And it was in my notebook. And when Tom asked me to, to do the piece for him, somehow this this little melody and some of the chords came to mind and I went back into the notebook and I had him sing that melody and it, it seemed to be the right thing to work on for him. The song really had a, a sense of loss. It really had the feeling of loss to it. And I thought, this is really interesting. This, I think, is my offering. This is my offering to, um, to the, the community that's losing people, 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 all the beauty of these people and the creative, these incredible, incredible creative people. And the whole arts community is so affected by it. And I thought that it would be really nice to make a song that he could actually sing at a funeral you know, if he wants to, or that really reflects what he's going through every day. So, I mean, I feel that in some, on some levels it's nice for people to know that, and yet I feel that the piece can be about anybody's loss. It doesn't have to be necessarily a piece about AIDS or about the gay community. It can be all of our sense of loss, you know, the, of human beings, or a loss of love, or, you know, or loss of life. I've chosen to live a life that has a lot of risk involved on every level. I mean, financially and uh, spiritually and creatively. And, and I think that that's, that's the choice that I make um, of, to try always to see if I can start from the beginning every time, um, see if I can do things that I'm not sure how they're going to turn out, um, try to keep on exploring in a certain way new, new territory for myself. Um, and to try to keep growing in one way or another. I think that that's the way that I've chosen to live my life and that makes things a lot less sure than some people would be able to tolerate. But that's actually something that's interesting to me. Mm -hmm.